Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where we talk to local leaders about their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. I'm Crystal Covington, and today I'm talking with Megan Walrod, a heart-based copywriting and marketing coach who shows women entrepreneurs how to attract more clients and earn more money in a way that feels good for them. Megan, welcome to the show. Thank you, it's so good to be here. Yeah. So, you named your business Live Your Yes, LLC. Can you tell us the story behind that? There's gotta be a little bit of intention, some sort of story that inspired you to, to give that your business name. Yes, and I'd love to share that story because the Live Your Yes came to me at a time in my life when I was really stuck. And it was one of those, I call it at the time, dark night of the soul where I just, mm. I knew I had so much to share with the world, but I was struggling with how to do that. And from the outside in, it looked like I was living a yes life, a lit up, like everything. I was engaged to be married with a man who had been my fantasy man. The mm -hmm. business that we were creating was on track to be six figures. Wow. My own coaching business was starting to find its legs, but there was something missing. And I spent weeks and actually months just struggling and praying and journaling and wondering what was wrong and what could I do to change this. And I didn't understand how I'd re recreated my life in California from the ground up with all the elements that I thought were important to me. I thought this would be happiness. Uh -huh. Why wasn't I happy? And I was starting to have these health issues that were unexplainable. Mm. And so I was praying every morning, talking with my girlfriends, like, spirit guide me, like what? do I need to see? And so one morning, I would wake up early and journal. That was my practice. Wow. And one morning, it was like, I was finally ready to actually see and hear what spirit had to share with me. Mm -hmm. So I was crying and saying, show me, like, show me. I'm ready to see. I'm ready to know. And I heard that voice that's not really a voice, but just that knowing of, you've been living your maybe. Oh. And shivers just went through me, more tears, because I realized how true that was in recreating my life. I had taken the safe harbor. I was still in the harbor. I had taken the safe route. And that resonated as such a, a truth to me. So I said, "Wow! so what do I do? And I heard, live your yes. Oh my gosh. And those three words, it was like they bubbled up from my belly. Yeah. I wasn't clear in that moment what that actually entailed, but I knew what it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And I knew that to live my yes meant living my life from my heart, from my inner guidance, from what lit me up, from what I was passionate about. Because I, what I realized about my relationship, the business we were creating, my life, I wasn't all in it. My mm. heart wasn't in it. It was what I thought I wanted, but I wasn't fully there. So live your yes became my mantra and my guidance wow. system to listen to what I desired, what lit me up, what am I passionate about? And it guided me to make some choices to let go of the things that were not working, let go of the relationship as gracefully as I was able to, let mm. go of that business, and begin to be in the question of what is my yes? What lights me up? Wow. So it became a journey of following the breadcrumbs, following the guidance. And so when it became time to give my business a name, even though my business is about copywriting and marketing and right. how, we, how we show up in the world to attract clients, I knew that if our hearts aren't in it, if my heart wasn't in it, if my client's heart isn't in it, it's like an empty invitation. When we're living our yes, lit up, turned on, the world loves a woman who's turned on and lit up and alive. Wow. And that's what creates the magnetism and the marketing, and that's what creates the true sense of fulfillment. And so for me, yes, I support clients in attracting more clients, earning mm -hmm. more money, and it's really about that soul satisfaction of knowing we're sharing our gifts and we're living a light, a life that wow. brings us alive. Yeah, that's deep. Talk about shivers. <laughs> I mean, woo! Goodness. So how did you, after a transition like that, and that is one of those really big aha moments mm -hmm. in life where you discover where you're really headed, what you really want to be doing with your life, where did you go from there? I mean, that's really 
a place where you probably needed to take a step back and really consider things? How did you find that direction? There's probably a lot of people right now watching this mm. that are in the same experience and trying to figure out how did they take the first step? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There were so many different pieces and I actually ended up writing a chapter about like, what are the seven steps to <laughs> live your yes? Did you publish it yet? I, it's, published. it's published. It's a chapter Good. in a book called The Energy of Healing. Okay. And about how those three words really supported me in the journey of healing. Mm -hmm. And yet for anyone watching from my own journey, it was really about, so I was given this guidance and there was no going back. There was no longer hanging out in the safety zone. I mean, it was creating misery and stuckness in my life anyway. So it was about how do I end what isn't working and have the courage to speak my truth with someone I loved in a way that was as kind as I could be. Mm -hmm. This isn't working. So it was leaving the safe harbor first and making all those choices to end that in as okay. conscious way as possible. And then it was really tuning into what were the what were the signs that I was being given? There was both this inner conversation and this outer conversation with the universe. Okay, universe, I'm listening. Uh -huh. What is my heart guiding me to do? And universe, show me what else is possible <laughs> beyond what I've been living and in this safe harbor. Yeah. And so it was actually a turning point for me when I became invited to join a team to do coaching with them, that it was like the universe saying, here, Here's ah. a place to make an impact. Here's a place to share your gifts. That's a next step out of here that isn't totally leaving the nest and going out on my own yet. Mm -hmm. It's giving me more strength, more tools, more skills, more confidence, so I can one day fully leave that nest and go out on my own. So it was being willing to take the big leap by taking the baby steps. Yeah, so it sounds like you had to cut off what wasn't working first, mm -hmm. and then you took that energy and you brought in something that fed you. Yes. That's yes. amazing. Yes. That's so amazing. Yeah. That's an encouraging story and journey. And I love the fact that you named your business after that big transformation. Yeah. So I love writing. Mm -hmm. And I know that's part of what you do. Tell yeah. us a little bit about you know, how you got into writing and what, is, um, what does writing mean for you? Ooh, that's such a juicy question. <laughs> I've been writing since I was a little girl. My parents were both published authors. Wow. Reading and writing was just kind of the water I swam in, so to say. And mm -hmm. so writing and speaking and training was part of my career. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really know there was such a thing as copywriting and writing for marketing and to attract clients. Like I didn't discover that until it became time for me to grow my own business. And I knew I had a gift with words and writing, but I had no idea how to market <laughs> myself. Like how do I use words to actually inspire yeses from my clients? Yes. And so, so my writing has grown as I've gotten skills. Okay, how can I use my gifts? Like we each have different gifts. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people writing isn't one of their gifts. Right. It was one of my gifts, it is one of my gifts. So then how can I use this, leverage this skill to market my business. And so writing for me means so much. It's both how do I tune into my own inner guidance and inner voice. I have a practice where I journal most mornings. Wow. And sometimes just <laughs> writing, just like stream of consciousness, just letting it all out or working with my dreams, whatever it is, just it clears the channel mm -hmm. and helps me tune in to my own guidance. And then to use writing as a form of expression and I love being able to take experiences that I've had and turn those into moments that I can share with other people as stories with lessons learned and that's what I love about your interview style because yeah. it's like that you get just share your story exactly yeah. and what are those lessons that then apply to both myself and my future and those who are tuning in and listening to the story yeah so writing is both a a business tool, a life tool, a spiritual tool, all of that. And I love supporting my clients in developing their skills of writing and using it both as how do they tap into their guidance mm -hmm. and how do they use it to, as a marketing tool. Yeah, so I write for marketing professionally mm -hmm. um, in PR and one of my earliest experiences with writing 
was, I mean, I, I've never been able to get into journaling. It is very hard for me. I sit in front of a piece of paper and I go, I have no idea what I feel. But if I write a blog and I mm. try to, I can e very easily think of topics. So my early writing experiences were blogs that I would start and I would tell people how to solve something. Mm. And by telling someone else how they can solve something, I was resolving it for myself. Yep, yep. Yeah, so those how-to blogs, and even still, when I write a how-to blog for you know whatever I'm, I'm, I'm working towards, it helps me mm -hmm. to figure out what I think about things, to kind of center myself and realize that everything isn't gonna be perfect. I get that from writing. And I get this sense of, I do know the answers mm. when I have the chance to really write a quality blog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just a really great exercise. It is, and I love what you're describing of the discovery process mm -hmm. of we both write about what we know we have something to say, yes. and in the process of it, we discover something else. Right. <laughs> that is, so it is such a, a gift in the writing process itself. Yeah. yeah. It's like we're excavating more gems through the letting the, the words come through and it's like, oh, that was in there, that was in there. And yeah. then like you said, the resolution for yourself, your own insights. Yeah. So tell me, you have had some really cool things going on in your life lately. <laughs> and I wanna find out what are some of the things that you love most about your life right now? Mm. <laughs> you probably know what I might say. <laughs> One of the things I shared with you earlier that I'm really enjoying is I, I feel really blessed to be living on a lot of land yeah. where there's a pond and a creek. And so there's something about so much space, like living in so much space that's inviting me to inhabit and embody more space mm -hmm. in my life, in my business, in my body, in my pleasure, in my joy, like what else is possible? And so being able to go out in the morning and put my yoga mat on the dock and do yoga and sit and do meditation and just feel both the stillness of the pond and uh -huh. the ever-flowing movement of the creek, it's just so who I am and what we be. Yeah, There's the stillness and the movement. And then the skinny dipping, which <laughs> just totally taps me into like little girl self who grew up in the country and got to just run around on the land and explore and have conversations with the invisible beings. You know, it's like oh. that little being gets to expand and the adult me gets to know the joy of feeling connected to something that's larger than me, that is both inspiring me, impacted by me, and supporting me. Like in the water, that sense of buoyancy, it's yeah. really enjoyable, <laughs> really enjoyable. What's funny is I love that you said that when you were a little girl, you um, talked to the invisible beings. Maybe that's a thing for writers. I used to ride my bicycle and talk to invisible people. <laughs> I would make up whole stories and have a whole conversation. There was a whole scene going on in my mm -hmm. head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a writer thing, I think. Well, it's interesting, right? Like the, the writing of the words to capture an experience and the imagination and the creativity and yeah. who else are we talking to and what yes. other stories are we creating in these other worlds? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of people that are probably wondering, you, know, you have a lot of lessons that you can teach as far as copywriting, how mm. to better market yourself. What are some of your favorite tips to share? <laughs> so there's so many. So living your yes is definitely one of them. It's like a core lesson of tuning into what actually lights you up, what makes you come alive, what are you really passionate about, mm -hmm. and choosing that, and doing that, and going for it. And, and the, we believe that our joy will come when we have money. Uh -huh. But what I love, one of my mentors has talks about is, and I've seen this from my own experience too and with my clients, is money actually follows joy. Oh. And so when we are tapped into what lights us up, our yes, even our turn on. And it's beyond a sexual turn on. It includes that, but it's beyond that. It's that really open and excited and being the magic and seeing the magic. Not only are we actually more receptive and able to receive money, new clients, dates, <laughs> whatever it is that we're looking <laughs> for, <love> invitations, <laughs> possibilities. Not only are we more receptive, we're actually inviting people into another energy and possibility into their own life. Mm -hmm. So that's why 
it's the marketing and the copywriting, the words are really important. And so I could give tips about that. I can, I can give one specific one. Yeah, before I do, there's also the energy. Mm -hmm. Who are we being and how are we showing up? And recognizing that when the two are together aligned and really powerful, wow, that's so engaging and so inviting. And that creates more of the impact we're desiring in our businesses, in our lives, in the world. Mm -hmm. in the that's world. a huge tip. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Are there any other lessons that you'd like to share with your audience? Well, there's, there's one, the specific one about marketing. Uh -huh. And one of the biggest mistakes that I made in the beginning of my career when I was trying to figure out what was wrong with me, mm -hmm. I even went to the place too of what's wrong with my ideal clients that they're not getting, how Aww. I can help them and how powerful I am. That is so not client attractive either. What's wrong <laughs> with you? What's wrong with me? That totally like <laughs> blocked any clients. And so, and I struggled with why, why don't they get me? Mm -hmm. So that was a huge mistake. And one of my biggest lessons learned was it's not about my ideal clients getting me. It's about me getting them. Oh, yeah. That is huge. And you know this exactly yeah. from the work that you do, too. It's like when I can show you I get you and I yes. know what you're going through, then that makes all the difference. So it's that ability to shift our point of view to our clients and speak to them. Yes. That way, that creates the bridge of connection. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people um, struggle with that in the past is just thinking that you can just kind of say, tell, talk about your product. I love what I have, you know, so I'm, I'm just going to tell you all of the features that it has to offer you. And that's not what people connect with. And they, they may not care about your features. Mm -hmm. They care about how it's going to change their life. They care about how your product or your service is going to impact them. And that's the language you have to speak, not yeah. in your language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. There's a great book I'd love to recommend to you that I actually yeah. just started reading. The title is hilarious. Is it okay if I swear? Sure, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the title of the book is called No One Wants to Read Your Sh**. I got that. <laughs> I got that book. Yes. Have you started reading it yet? Yes. <laughs> it's so right on and it it's is so inspiring. On. And so it's by yes. the same man, Stephen Pressfield, who wrote The War of Art. And so where he's coming from in this is once we actually realize that no one wants to read our sh**, <laughs> that what that actually begins to cultivate in us is empathy, empathy for our readers. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And we recognize, oh, there's an exchange that's happening here. Yeah. And he talks, too, about that perspective shift, mm -hmm. being able to be in our readers position to ask, is this interesting to them? How yes. can I make this more engaging for them? I love that you yeah. have the book too. <laughs> oh yes. There are a lot of gems in there. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited to finish it. I don't have a whole lot of time for reading, but I've gotten pretty far so far and, and it's really entertaining and he's spot on with the fact that just what we were talking about is having that empathy, thinking about what people need mm -hmm. versus what you want to share. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one other thing that feels really important, so here I've been sharing the lesson of live your yes, do what mm -hmm. lights you up. And on the other hand, there's speak the language of your ideal clients and mm -hmm. what it is, you know, what it is that they're asking for. So yes. there's actually, the beauty is where those two meet up. So it's not leaving ourselves out of the picture of the marketing uh -huh. and it's not forgetting about them. It's how to bring it all together. So we really are sharing our own passions, which ultimately is to serve them. And it's basically learning how do we talk their language so they actually get I can help them. Yes. So it's a whole language translation. Maybe our little girl selves who talk to the, uh, <laughs> our imaginary friends, maybe that's where some of our skills came from yeah. too. <laughs> maybe so. Well, gosh, this has been so fun. <laughs> I'm so glad you came on the show. I had so much fun too. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> thank you. All right, well, thank you for watching Inside the Women of Denver with me, Crystal Covington, and my guest, Megan Walrod. Always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known.